Here's what's coming up on episode 51 of the Big Seance Podcast. So it's time for me to share my top five episodes. The top five most popular blog posts at BigSeance.com for the year of 2015. Number one is a post that fascinates me still to this day. It's the number one post from 2015, but it's also the top most popular post ever going back to the beginning. These are the funny and interesting search terms that brought people to BigSeance.com in the last two years. Why have I not received afterlife messages from my dog? This kind of really touches me. But my gosh, if I knew that there were paranormal K-Cup flavors, I would have been on that. Um, <laughs> how big are EVP pizzas? I certainly love pizza and I love EVP. So if we could figure out a way to combine both of them, that would be super awesome. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Welcome, welcome, all Paranerds, to the final episode of the year. You know, I just finished celebrating Christmas, and 2015 is just about in the books completely. You know, as I mentioned a few days ago in the big seance parlor on Facebook, it has been a really big year for me, both here at the big seance, but also at work. So it has been super busy, particularly in the last few months. So I haven't been able to nerd out with you all nearly as much as I'd like. And that kind of drives me nuts, seriously. The last several episodes have kind of drifted from my usual patterns and style. Although I must tell you, I really liked how it felt to record on location for that last one with Meredith and Ginger at the Milton Schoolhouse. I'm not sure what you guys thought of that one, but it was fun to be there, and it was also fun to edit and put it together, actually, even though it took way more time. Maybe, just maybe, I'll find a way for more of our conversations here to be recorded and edited in a similar kind of on-location style. We'll see. I'm just thinking out loud right now, really. But seriously, I want to thank you for your patience as you've waited for more episodes and consistency. I have set a few goals for myself in 2016. Number one, I want to get the podcast back on track and I hope to pick up some new guests. Just know I've got a lot of work to do now to get to that point, but I'm ready to jump in. And number two, I need to get myself healthy. I need to get to the gym. A side effect of spending so much time with my paranormal passion is that I sit on my rear a lot more. So I haven't been taking care of myself nearly enough. So both of these goals are going to fight each other a bit, but I think it's time to try to make it work. There are a few things that have inspired me to kick this goal off, but Joey from the really funny Cocktails and Cream Puffs podcast, shout out to Joey, has been a big inspiration, whether he knows it or or not. He has taken a picture of himself, actually, every day on Facebook, either coming or going from the gym, and that has kind of kept him accountable. Now, don't expect a picture from me every day on Facebook that actually kind of makes me start ticking right now, just thinking about it. And full disclosure, I have not taken on this goal just yet. In fact, I just ate about four pieces of candy here in the parlor. But getting healthier is my second goal for 2016. If I fail, 
I'm failing publicly. So no pressure. So here's what you're going to hear in this last episode of 2015. I first have some feedback from listeners who have contacted me both at BigSeance.com and through the Big Seance Parlor on Facebook. Then I'm going to share with you the top five most popular Big Seance podcast episodes of all time. And I say all time because really, 2015 was the first full year of the podcast. I started this journey in the middle of 2014. Do you think you know what the top five most popular episodes have been? Then we'll talk about the top five most popular blog posts at BigSeance.com for the year of 2015, and that excludes podcast episodes, you know, the show notes that I put up at BigSeance.com. And then possibly what I'm most excited for, because really I think this is fascinating, and some of them are just hilarious, but I'm going to read to you a giant list of some of the most fascinating and funny search terms that have brought people to BigSeance.com in the last few years. Oh, I can't wait. We'll have another Spectral Edition from Tim Prossel, and then at the end, I'll throw in a few other stats just for fun. Well, are you ready? Here we go. So here's some feedback that we've gotten at BigSeance.com recently. And this is uh, this first one is from someone simply known as L, the initial L. Hi, I discovered your podcast about two months ago and have listened to many of the episodes since then. Love listening whilst hiking and walking in the park. Very interesting and informative. Have a personal inquiry. I am interested in having clairvoyant classes and training to fine-tune my skills in order to become a pro or do this as a career. Can you recommend anyone in the Tinley Park, Illinois, or nearby, such as Lombard area, who offers classes? We are having trouble finding skilled clairvoyants who can bring me up to scratch on techniques and tips. Please let me know if you have anyone in mind. Thought we would ask since you have a lot of contacts from the show. Best wishes and have a lovely festive season. So if you are listening and you happen to know this area or have any recommendations or tips for L, please let me know. Uh, or you could maybe um, reply to this comment on BigSeance.com, although I don't remember exactly what post that comment was from. But basically, you can let me know and I can get back with L. This next one is from Denise Sia, and I think you'll find her comment interesting. We've heard from Denise here on the podcast before. She says, I listen to your podcast during my nightly runs. When I go running at night, it is not down a lit neighbor street. I run along a lonely wooded dirt path along the Missouri River with no headlamp, but with my two dogs, a pit bull terrier that is protection trained, and a Jack Russell terrier. Oh, and a couple of lost coyotes. There is nothing more grounding than the night sky and a moonlit river. When I am listening to one of your spooky episodes, I feel like I am sitting and watching a movie instead of feeling the agonizing burn of my legs. Patrick, you make a 10-mile run seem effortless. You entertain me with each episode, and your humor is lifting. I would have to say my favorite episode would be episode 43, Demonologist and Paranormal Researcher Keith Johnson. I did not agree with everything that he said, but I was constantly looking over my shoulder during this episode and run. There are so many mysteries in this world that we will never be able to understand, and that is exciting to me because I want to question and learn. Do I believe in demons? Of course. But I look at demons as demonic or negative energy, 
To me, this type of energy is nothing more than the manifestations of people's fears. If enough people believe in something that they do not understand, through fear, anything can manifest, and that, to me, is scary and dangerous. I call these people yes people. They don't question, they follow, and they don't look past their fears. Look at the Salem witch trials. If you were different or agreed differently, you were a witch and possibly killed for it. These fears manifest the worst out of humans. You can call them monsters, demons, or serial killers. Whatever you want to call it, demons are nothing more than negative energy, and energy can never be destroyed. It can only shift or simply manifest. When others witness this shift or manifestations, they are simply sensitive. You have to learn to block certain energies. Well, I want to thank Denise for that comment. And if anybody has a response to that, let me know. I certainly uh, think I share several of those opinions in, uh, in that statement. But you heard that Denise's favorite episode was 43 with demonologist and paranormal researcher Keith Johnson. So we'll see a little bit later if that episode was in the top five. Our friend Conrad posted a video in the big seance parlor, and it really caught my attention. And it has been on my mind for a while, actually. He posted it a few days before Christmas. If you haven't checked out the Big Seance Parlor on Facebook, just search for us, request to be added, and then I'll let you in. There's no secret word or anything like that. But that's a way to jump into some paranormal conversation and share while you're waiting for the next episode. Anyway, Conrad posted a video that was aired on TV in the UK, apparently in 2004. And I'd never seen it. From what I read, the station that aired this got a ton of complaints for various reasons, and it was pretty controversial. It's from an illusionist, Darren Brown, from the UK. Uh, in this video, he held a seance with 12 invited guests. It is completely fascinating, but it also might not be exactly what some of you would expect. I don't think I want to say too much about it now because I may visit this topic again in the future, and I want you to be able to check out the video first. And if you do, I'd love to hear from you and get your thoughts. But that video, again, is in the big seance parlor. All right, so it's time for me to share my top five episodes so far of the big seance podcast. And again, this is actually since June 26th of 2014, which was my very first episode. So really, this is in the last year and a half. We'll start backwards. We'll start from number five. Number five is Madame Delphine Lalari, the real-life murderess portrayed in American horror story Coven. And this episode was number seven from August 6th, 2014. This was my first opportunity to have a friend of mine, Victoria Cosner, on the podcast. She's the author of Mad Madame LaLaurie, New Orleans' most famous murderess revealed. We chatted about the real-life Delphine LaLaurie portrayed by Kathy Bates in American Horror Story Coven. A lot of talk about New Orleans in this episode. Plus, we had a bonus discussion on cemeteries. Victoria is also the author of Missouri's Mad Dr. McDowell, a book she co-authored with Lorelai Shannon. And you may remember hearing them talk about this book on the show in a hilarious episode more recently. Number four is an episode called Departing Visions and After-Death Communication with Carla Wills Brandon. And that was episode 31 from March 19th, 2015. Carla Wills Brandon, author and researcher, discusses deathbed or departing visions and other after-death communication in this episode. We also talked about death phobia as well as an exciting discussion about psychomantiums. I remember that one very well. Check out Carla's book, Heavenly Hugs. Comfort, Support, and Hope from the Afterlife, which is also found on 
the bigseance.com recommended reading list. I haven't updated that in a while. I probably should do that. But I love Carla. She's fun to follow on Facebook as well. Number three is The Story of a True Haunting with Edwin F. Becker, Part 1, specifically. And this is Episode 20 from November 6th, 2014. So this was Part 1 of a two-part episode. Mr. Becker shared his story of the very real haunting experiences that he and his family experienced in 1970. The story, which involves the very first televised exorcism by NBC and was featured on an episode of Paranormal Witness, is told in his best-selling book, True Haunting. And one thing that I always hear from people that stands out from this episode is Ed's voice. He has a great voice for storytelling, particularly in a kind of spooky way. I really enjoyed that conversation, and apparently quite a few more people heard part one than part two. So if you didn't hear the second half of the conversation, come on, man, you've got to finish part two. I would encourage you to check it out. So this brings us to number two, which was an episode entitled Psychic Predictions and Prophecies for 2015. And this was about a year ago, episode 24 from December 23rd, 2014. This was actually the most popular episode for nearly a year until the number one episode booted it out of its place. This was an episode in which I gathered psychic predictions and prophecies for 2015 from people like Janice Carlson, Angela Thomas, Rob Guttrow, Carol J. Obley, Karen A. Dahlman, Lee Allen Howard, and Marilyn Painter, who was actually my first guest ever on the podcast. And I have to tell you, it's an interesting listen now that 2015 has come to an end. You might want to check it out again. I really wish I would have had more time to put a predictions episode together for 2016, because people really loved that predictions episode. But it took a lot of preparation ahead of time and just wasn't possible in the last couple of months. But we'll look into maybe doing the same sort of thing for 2017. Gosh, doesn't that seem super far away? And you know me. I certainly welcome any predictions or prophecies for the new year if anyone wants to contact me. All right, here we go. Maybe I should throw in some drum roll But the number one most popular Big Seance podcast episode was Ghost Hunters and the Ghosts of St. Charles Over My Dead Body, episode 41 from September 8th, 2015. This just seems like yesterday. This fall, Sci-Fi aired an episode of Ghost Hunters where they highlighted and investigated several locations in a city I love and know well, St. Charles, Missouri. A lot of locals were very excited and waited patiently for this special episode in Ghost Hunter's 10th season. So my episode of the Big Seance podcast came out ahead of the Ghost Hunter's episode, and I gave some heads up on the locations and the stories that I thought we were likely to see. A lot of that information came from Ghosts of St. Charles, a great book by Michael Henry. I actually did go to the watch party for that episode. It was in downtown historic St. Charles, just feet away from all the locations investigated in the show, actually. And I got to visit a bit with Michael Henry. But it was a bit crazy, and there was an exciting crowd, and I did not get the opportunity to follow up with him with a microphone in my hand. It was a cool experience, even though I think many, including me, were a bit disappointed with the episode, which seemed a bit rushed, with too many locations crammed into an hour. But that didn't stop the podcast episode from shooting to number one here at the Big Seance. So now what I want to do is give you the top five Big Seance blog posts 
And these are excluding the podcast episodes where I put the show notes for all the podcast episodes. But these are the most popular blog posts for 2015. So really just the last year. And I think we'll go backwards on this one as well. Number five was a blog post called The Conjuring Sequel and The Enfield Poltergeist. And I find this one interesting and one of the reasons why I think uh, that blog post, even though it's fairly old, is kind of creeping up in the rankings again is, you know, The Enfield Poltergeist is going supposedly featured in the next Conjuring movie. And that actually was leaked uh a couple of years ago. So it's been a while and apparently that's going to happen. So I think people must be searching out that one. Number four was an old post, actually a not very relevant post anymore, but Sony Nightshot, a call for advice from paranormal investigators. And this was actually the number five top post of all time going back to 2012. But uh, in this post, I was Uh, Curious and asking other paranormal investigators to help me out with some of my equipment, and that included the Sony Nightshot, which has um, always been really, really super popular with ghost hunters and paranormal investigators, particularly if you're not rich to get the big boy night vision equipment. And I actually think since then, the tech world has kind of moved on and there are options out there, but... uh, That post continues to get a lot of hits, which kind of makes me laugh. The number three most popular blog post at BigSeance.com is actually a recent post, and probably a lot of you remember it, a funeral home ghost story. And this was a story that was submitted anonymously by a really nice Big Seance podcast listener who has been very supportive and uh, someone who um, works in the funeral industry. And so that's a really cool story. If you haven't checked that out, you should definitely should. Number two, the second most popular post at big seance.com is do spirits reside at Papa Jack's pizza in Lexington, Missouri. And actually this was the number three top post all time going back to 2012. But this was the investigation report from my paranormal team's uh, paranormal investigation of Papa Jack's Pizza in Lexington, Missouri. A really, really cool experience several years ago. And I think it's kind of an interesting post. I think you might enjoy it. There's some evidence in there and still like a few mysteries that we haven't really solved from Papa Jack's Pizza. That was number two. Number one is a post that fascinates me still to this day. It's the it's the number one post from 2015, but it's also the top most popular post ever going back to the beginning. And that is being able to read in your dreams. I still get comments on that every now and then someone will find that. And it's so interesting. I can tell when someone stumbles on that site, it's because they put some search term in or they were curious about some dream that they just woke up after having where they read in their dream and they were fascinated with it. And so they were looking for answers. And apparently this is a, a, a page that many people stumble across after they look for help about reading in their dreams. And uh, I just, I just think that's really neat. I think in that post, I talked about just one dream that I had where I read in my read in my dream. And I think that's the only time that's ever happened, but it was a really a, a big dreaming moment for me because I don't have a lot of dreams. And I think it's cool that that's number one. So I'll definitely link to most of these links in the show notes if you'd like to check out being able to read in your dreams. And if you've read in your dreams or if you have some fascinating dream where you've had some ability that you don't normally have, then um, not that I can't read, but you know, most people don't think of reading in their dreams. But anyway, contact me if you have those experiences. So now I'm going to take you to a portion of the episode that I'm really excited about. And I, um, I'm probably most excited about this. I don't know why. But when you Google a search term and you click on a link that takes you to a big seance.com link, WordPress keeps track of what those search terms are. 
And it's one of my favorite parts of the stats that I have access to from WordPress. And I'm not going to lie, though, to get the list of search terms that I'd like to highlight in this episode. It took me about three hours to go through them all. Um, Having some seriously OCD tendencies really helps me get through all of those (laughs) lists. But um, I've done this kind of thing a few times in the early days of BigSeance.com. And so I picked up where I left off around two years ago when I talked about this last. So what these are, these are the funny and interesting search terms that brought people to BigSeance.com in the last two years. And actually, I'm going to read these right off of my notebook. I have three pages of notebook, so you're probably going to hear me shift some pages around but uh you know they're really in no particular order but they're just some of them are really funny so apparently someone who searched ashland brand artificial flowers came to big seance.com and i actually have a feeling that they made it to my uh maybe one of my posts about my halloween altar where i mentioned having some artificial uh, flowers on my halloween altar But the funny thing is that seven people found BigSeance.com for searching Ashland brand artificial flowers. Super funny. Another good one is, are celebrities famous on the other side? And that's an interesting question, isn't it? A random funny one. Here we go. Paranormal Big Bird, Missouri. Paranormal Big Bird, Missouri. I, I, I just don't even know. Um, here's another one, how to do a seance and call upon Marilyn Monroe. So apparently someone's trying to contact Marilyn Monroe. Is Steve from Ghost Hunters married? Well, you know what? I think he is, but, um, I think that's funny too. Apparently someone's interested in, uh, Steve, perhaps (laughs) another Ghost Hunters on Ghost Hunters. Who does Amy not get along with? funny. Someone's trying to maybe start some drama. Uh, Why have I not received afterlife messages from my dog? This kind of really touches me a little bit. There's another one I think coming up a little bit later that's just, you know, why haven't I received messages from, you know, my loved one or something like that. But, you know, why haven't I heard from my dog? So, uh, I mean, to type in that question, someone really has to be concerned about that. Can spirits communicate through text messages? You know, I bet if we talk to Cal Cooper, who I would love to talk to one of these days, who is a uh, investigator and parapsychologist or a student of parapsychology, I've read a few books on the topic, and I'm pretty sure he would say yes, or at least people have documented or claimed that they have gotten text messages from their loved ones. And as popular as uh, iPhones and things like that are getting. I'm sure it it happens more and more regularly. Uh, Here's another one. Garden Ridge decorative candle holders. And actually, I'm going to skip the other ones because I have like 10 different (laughs) search terms where people came to bigseance.com after searching something about candles or something like that. And if you know me, you know that I'm a big candle nerd anyway. So that's funny. Sarah S. Step EVP. I was seeing the war. I think that's what it says. Sarah Estep EVP. I was seeing the war. Um, I'd have to look that up. I don't remember that EVP. Maybe there is an EVP. Or I don't know. Maybe someone thinks they captured Sarah Estep in an EVP. That would be an interesting one to research. Scary ghost stories and tales of the glories long ago. That brought someone so That's appropriate for this time of year. Has anyone had a hard time communicating with their spirit guides? Absolutely. I relate to that one. Um, You know, that's probably something that I've searched at some point in time. Has anyone had a hard time communicating with their spirit guides? Definitely. Goober Peas Party Decorations. Goober Peas Party Decorations. All right. What did Lorraine Warren see during the exorcism of Maurice that traumatized her? 
if you know who this Maurice is, I'm not even sure. But several people actually are curious as to what Lorraine Warren saw or what she experienced in different situations. And I'm not sure what investigation Maurice was from, but apparently she was traumatized by that. Why don't my loved ones come back on EVP? Another one of those that kind of like the dog one. Uh, dog seance, just two words, dog seance. Gosh, that would be fun. I, I don't know exactly what a dog seance looks like, but that sounds perfect. <laughs> this is funny. Big boy graveyard in Missouri. Big boy graveyard in Missouri. Didn't know that was a thing. Dreaming of flying dogs. I do have a blog post on bigseance.com about dreaming of flying I don't remember dogs being a part of that. I guess I could be wrong. Uh, what to do about spirits whispering in home. Interesting. Now, if you think about it, for someone to type this in, I mean, no one just makes this up, right? What to do about spirits whispering in home. Uh, <laughs> okay, you ready? Um, paranormal K-cup flavors. I, you know what? I don't have a, uh, a Keurig anymore. I, I used a Keurig for years, like twice a day. I, I burned several Keurigs out because I drink so much coffee, but my gosh, if I knew that there were paranormal K cup flavors, I would have been on that. And, uh, if I find some paranormal K cup flavors, I might even get another Keurig. Um, if anybody knows anything about some paranormal cake cup flavors. Please let me know. Something else funny. Uh, it's really, really apparently difficult for people to spell Ouija or Ouija. And I was telling Karen Dahlman this just the other day, actually. There are several search terms where people are looking for something about the wedgie board. W-E-D-G-I-E. -E, or... Uh, different spellings along those lines, but you know, lots of wedgie boards, which is kind of humorous. Excessive book knowledge that brought someone to my web website. Um, I don't think I have a, a, a lot of excessive book knowledge. Actually, I had don't get to read as much as I used to. And I would love to read a lot more and have a lot of more, a lot more time to read, but, I don't know. Apparently, excessive book knowledge takes you to bigseance.com. Um, this one's funny, too. I actually posted this on my Facebook the other day. Looking for women in Lexington, Missouri. That, of course, is my hometown. That's also where Papa Jack's Pizza was. We talked about a second ago. But uh, someone's looking for women in Lexington, Missouri and uh, found my site. Um, I'm not sure they found what they were looking for. New wedgie board movie. There's another wedgie board. This one's interesting. She never left. Think about that. She never left. That could almost give you a chill just thinking about that one. The Enfield Poltergeist and the Conjuring Bloody Disgusting. Apparently, someone's unhappy with the movie or something. Uh, I'm not sure what this one's about. McDonald's giving out Ouija boards in October. Did that really happen? I should have searched some of these things before this episode. Did McDonald's really give out Ouija boards in October? I'd love to hear if someone really got a McDonald's Ouija board. Karen, do you know about that one? <laughs> I just don't even know. Uh, I totally would have been in the drive through that day if that happened, though. Um, grieving loss of pet cat. Why has Merlin come to me as a spirit guide? This is something that's popped up in podcast episodes before, as I learn, uh, you know, several of my medium friends have talked about their spirit guides. And I apparently have a spirit guide named Merlin in an exercise with Marilyn Painter. Actually, I learned that my spirit guide was named Merlin, and this came from my own mouth and... Uh, you know me, I'm kind of skeptical about it. I'm not sure what to think about it, but apparently I have my spirit guide is named Merlin. What happens when a pet dies? 
Interesting. How to create a spiritual smell. I just, I just don't even know. Um, incense, maybe? I don't know what answer to give that person. How to create a spiritual smell. Big, tall, and loud trucks. Well, again, I, uh, I hope I uh, helped you out at bigseance.com. Um, <laughs> how big are EVP pizzas? How big are EVP pizzas? I want to know. I certainly love pizza and I love EVP. So if we could figure out a way to combine both of them, that would be super awesome. Can you be spiritual and religious? I think I know what post that person probably clicked on. That's an old one. Super old one. Cheapest place to purchase Hocus Pocus movie in St. Charles County, Missouri. That's somebody I'd probably love hanging out with. Cheapest place to purchase Hocus Pocus movie in St. Charles County, Missouri. Now, this is one I could give some answers to. Is it a good practice to play back EVP sessions at a slower speed? Now, um, we'd have to ask Randall Keller, my my cuz, who's an EVP researcher. But uh, in my experience, I would never play back an entire audio file, which, you know, depending on what situation it is, an entire audio file could be hours long. But if it was a particular moment I was curious about or uh, some really intense, a uh, smaller chunk of time, absolutely, I, I, I would take advantage of technology in those situations and either slow it down sometimes for sure, if I thought I found a message or or an EVP uh, or something that could possibly be an EVP, yeah, I sometimes slow those down. I do some noise removal. I amplify them. Um, you know, some people have even been known to reverse them and see what happens when you reverse them. I don't uh, very often go that far, but uh, I also haven't really done any EVP experimenting in quite a long time. But absolutely, at least small portions of your audio file. I don't know that I'd do the whole thing. Gosh, I'd probably pull my hair out. And, and the time it takes to do EVP is one of the reasons why I kind of slowed down and got burned out on it. You know, people really, really want to know what happened to Carolyn Perrin during the exorcism and seance at the Conjuring House. There's several different, you know, search terms people have, you know, complete questions that people have typed out about that. Those people should probably check out the Keith Johnson episode, the first part of that conversation where we talked a lot about his experience at the Real Conjuring house. Um, here's another dogs crossing over. Um, this one's kind of interesting and, and makes me sound a lot cooler than I am. And I don't know if they're really searching for me or someone else, but info on the book written by Patrick Keller on the big seance. No, I've not written a book, and uh, you know, maybe one of these days I would. It would probably be kind of fun. But I also wonder if they've gotten me confused with Randall Keller, who has written a book. Uh, you should check that out. Um, let's see. Flipping pages. Last one. One more really good search term. This is funny. Writing evil entities before seance. Writing evil entities before seance. Now, I'm pretty confident. We could be pretty confident that they mean ridding evil entities before seance. But it's kind of fun just, you know, imagining imagining writing evil entities before a seance. I'm not sure if many of you would encourage that, uh, especially since many of you don't encourage <laughs> a lot of the spirit communication anyway. So please don't ride your evil entities. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I think that's uh, something really fun to do every couple of years to just go back and, uh, you know, stats can be really, really super fun. So let's take a little bit of, of a break. Uh, give my voice a break because, you know, it's been a while since I've just talked this long, but also give you a chance to hear someone else's voice as Tim Prossel brings us another spectral edition. Tim? 
Thank you, Patrick. Welcome to Spectral Edition, in which I read actual ghost reports published in U.S. newspapers between the years of 1865 and 1918. This article comes from a newspaper called the Omaha Daily Bee, and it was published on July 18th, 1874. The headline is A Ghost Story, A Mysterious Woman in White Flitting Around in Prospect Hill Cemetery. It was not long since that the report that the house standing at the northwest corner of 13th Street and Capitol Avenue was haunted excited considerable curiosity among the superstitious. This morning, however, we were told a reliable story that puts the haunted house way in the shade. The scene of this strange and true narrative is Prospect Hill Cemetery, adjoining which Mr. H. P. Stanwood, the well-known sculptor, has a small dwelling and a marble-cutting shop in which several hands are employed. On Tuesday night, shortly after dark, one of two brothers who sleep in the shop happened to step out of doors before retiring, and looking out over the silent city of the dead, a vision, a ghost, a woman in white, the invariable costume of ghosts, met his astonished gaze. The mysterious being was slowly flitting toward the building when he ran in and brought his brother out to view the strange sight. Both became scared and hastening out the back door, just as the ghost came in the front door and blew out the light, they ran over to Mr. Stanwood's residence to inform him of what had happened. Mr. Stanwood and the men went out to see what was the matter, and sure enough, they saw before them the ghost, who hit Mr. Stanwood on the back and asked where her children were, if they were buried in that tomb. The ghost then flitted into the house, blew out the light, and entering a bedroom, so scared the occupant that he jumped out of the window and ran away. One of the two brothers mentioned above, having pulled out his revolver, deliberately took aim and fired twice at the ghost, but without effect. She then took her departure into the cemetery, followed by the men to a certain grave, where she vanished. On Wednesday night, the mysterious ghost again made her appearance, and so frightened the two brothers that they came downtown to sleep during that night and the next night. The above is a true statement of facts, as related to us by a gentleman of veracity. Mr. Stanwood himself is not a superstitious man and has no faith in ghosts, but our informant assures us that he substantiates the above statement. I'm Tim Prossel, and you've been listening to Spectral Edition. If you enjoyed this story, I have more than 200, and I post them each weekend on my website. The website is called Vera Van Slyke Ghostly Mysteries. And now back to Patrick. Thanks for joining us for the Big Seance Podcast. We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. As accurately as I can tell... The all-time majority of my big seance.com visitors come from the following countries. Number one, and this probably would make sense to most of you, the U.S. makes sense. Number two, do you think you know? It might be obvious to you. U.K. is number two. And this is BigSeance.com. My podcast stats are a little bit different, but BigSeance.com. I think on the podcast, my number two might actually be Canada. But uh, at BigSeance.com, number three is Canada. And number four, where all of my visitors come from, is Australia. And of course, there are many, many countries included in that list, but those are the top four. I'm actually pretty impressed by um, the number of countries, countries that, you know, I've never even heard of, actually. Here are the all-time top commenters at BigSeance.com. Now, as I've, as I've stopped blogging a lot at BigSeance.com and, and use it mainly as a place to kind of focus on the podcast and include show notes and have a, a place for people to, you know, find information about the podcast – um, I still do get comments, but not as often as I used to. But um, I think we're going to go backwards for this one. The all-time top commenters at BigSeance.com. Number six is Sally Bosco. Sally rocks. I haven't talked to her in a while, but she's been a good supporter. Number five is Diane from the blog Paranormal Logistically. 
And uh, I'll try to link that in there if you don't want to try to spell that out. Number four, again, my buddy and cousin Randall Keller, uh, the author and EVP researcher and podcaster. Uh, You can check out his Voices podcast if you haven't already. Um, Anyway, he's number four. Number three is Scooby Clue. Number two is Renee Rude, the paranormalist. You should check out her site, too. And number one is Gary Lee, who has done a lot of commenting at BigSeance.com. All you commenters rock. Thank you so much in the last, you know, what, four years. Thank you for, for being here and being so supportive. Well, I think we'll cut this episode to an end as my voice gets raspy and tired uh, on this solo episode that I, you know, don't do very often, no matter what holidays you celebrate. uh, I hope your time with friends, family, and loved ones have been really enjoyable. And if you don't celebrate any holidays, well, then hopefully you've been relaxing with some time off because everybody needs a little bit of that. And I'm not sure what 2016 is going to bring just yet, but I'm jumping in. Happy New Year, everyone. Peace out. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit BigSeance.com, now the home of both the blog and the podcast. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Do you have any comments or feedback? Please contact me at Patrick at BigSeance.com. You can call my feedback line at 77 77- 755 tell me that's 775 775- 583-5563. You can also record audio feedback right from the site using the SpeakPipe link included in the show notes. I could decide to include your voice in a future show. Thank you so much for listening and reading. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out, but we'll see you and light them again next time. Paranerd hashtag today is EVP pizza, EVP pizza. And when someone asks you about it, you can be like, duh, doesn't everybody know? Gosh.